Welcome to our CCPS Science Review Lab. Today we're going to tackle a pretty big topic and I want to start off by talking about the relationship between these two pictures. On the left, obviously we have a picture of Earth's interior. You can see the inner core, the outer core, and the mantle. And we know that heat transfers from that inner core to the outer core, and then it goes in through the, it starts transferring through the mantle. And we can see here in the illustration that it's showing the convection currents that exist, meaning that the mantle that is closest to the heat source warms up, it becomes less dense and begins to rise. Once it's further away from the heat source, it then sinks back down and repeat. And that's where we get those convection currents. We've got the same idea going on over here in this is actually a pot of water. And we've got some thermal imaging. So we know that the bottom of that pot there that we see is the hottest. It's closest to the heat source. So that makes sense. That heat is going to transfer to the cooler liquid on top, right? And so that's going to eventually through convection currents again, warm that entire container of water. We have some of the same principles applying when we look over here. First, we've got sunlight coming towards Earth, right? If you can imagine way over here, we've got sunlight coming towards Earth. And that's obviously energy traveling via radiation. It more comes through Earth's atmosphere, right? And it starts to warm the atmosphere. Then it gets absorbed by Earth's surface and re-radiates out. Okay. And that's what's going to keep our atmosphere nice and warm. Now, depending upon where you are on Earth, you're going to get a different amount of light and heat. We know that the hottest part of Earth is obviously on the equator. That's getting that direct light. So you can imagine that that heat and light's coming in directly there. But once we get up towards the poles and some of the higher latitudes, we know that it's much colder up there. And that's primarily because that light and heat is coming in at an angle. So it's not coming in as directly. So it's not coming in as strongly. The end result of that is that Earth is heated unevenly. And with that uneven heating, we end up with global patterns of air movement. Okay. So if we look here, um, we can see talking about the seasons, if we have more direct sunlight on an area, that's going to warm that area more. If you've got less direct sunlight, obviously that area is going to be cooler. And in this case, the more and less direct sunlight because of Earth on its axis results in seasonal changes. That's the pattern we see there. Now, if we look over here in this image on the right, we're going to see that with that convection that we talked about earlier, okay, we're now going to be seeing patterns of global winds. Okay, we see these global winds and you've heard about this before. So that air and that's warmed up over here closest to the equator is going to become less dense and it's going to rise up over here where it's going to cool a bit more and then it's going to come back down and that's going to create one air current there. We also see that affecting then the water currents. So all of this, all of these currents that we're seeing are a result of the uneven heating of Earth. And that uneven heating occurs, A, because we're sitting on an axis and because we're all spherical and round-like. So in today's Show What You Know, I want you to take a look and see here we've got Earth sitting on its axis and we can see it revolving around the sun. Imagine for a second that we took away that tilt, okay? And Earth was kind of sitting upright with its northern pole facing straight north and its southern pole facing straight south. How do you think the heating of the Earth would change 
if Earth was at a zero degree tilt? Think about it and show me what you know.